Why is Bitcoin, Nick, not as bad for the environment as many critics like to allege? Hmm. Thanks for having me back. And um, yeah, I'll start by saying, look, Bitcoin absolutely is an industry that consumes a lot of energy. That is by design. We needed to find a way to issue the units fairly. So to create a unit of Bitcoin, miners have to burn some energy. Uh, Satoshi thought about alternative ways to do it, but there wasn't really a better way to fairly distribute a monetary unit from scratch. Now, Cambridge Center for Alternative Finance has some good estimates on Bitcoin's uh, renewable versus non-renewable share of energy. They find that it's about 39% as of their most recent study. The Chinese element is very interesting. Certainly some Bitcoins are mined with coal in Xinjiang province and Inner Mongolia. But if you look at the other provinces where it's actually, there's a lot of Bitcoin mining activity on a seasonal basis, you're looking at Sichuan province and Yunnan province. In those places, there's a lot of hydropower that was overbuilt over the last decade. Yeah. And that's hydropower which would otherwise be curtailed. And so you see that being put to use mining Bitcoin. Yeah. And so that's a cleaner way to mine it. So, so it's sort of a, a more nuanced picture than than some of the critics. So, represent. Stick, so sticking with that nuance then, Nick, I mean, a lot of people would, when they sort of talk about uh, how dirty Bitcoin is, they compare it to the idea of sort of, you know, how dirty sort of cash would be or swiping a credit card would be. And that's the comparison they're making. Is that a fair apples to apples comparison? Mm. It's just very different. I mean, a credit network is a small layer in the broader payments, clearing, and settlement monetary stack and ultimately those networks depend on the us dollar so i would argue that since bitcoin proposes an entire self-contained monetary and payment system you should probably be comparing that to the whole dollar system and all the externalities that, that entails uh, and you could even if you wanted to stretch the analogy a little bit represent that the us military is one of those pillars that supports the dollar system of course that's a big consumer of oil so it really is a function of what you compare it to a lot of people compare it to individual payments networks like Venmo or Visa. I'm not exactly sure that's a fair comparison because those are just small layers in the broader dollar system. Mm, nevertheless, I'm sure we're all hoping for a cleaner, greener future. You talked about how Satoshi had sort of thought about ways in which this whole structure, the whole mining concept could be more energy efficient. But what are some of the clever ways in which people are trying to adopt mm. clean energy within the whole mining process? Yeah, so the interesting thing about Bitcoin and proof of work is that Bitcoin is a geography independent buyer of energy. And we've never actually had that before. Generally speaking, we have to create energy near to population centers. That's not the case with Bitcoin. All you need is internet in order to mine it. So you have this interesting geography arbitrage situation where Bitcoin is a buyer of energy in those places where it might be curtailed otherwise where energy might be abundant, but there's not a buyer for it. So that was the case, for instance, uh, in the southern provinces of China that I mentioned, where there was far too much hydropower, and China hasn't done a good job of building the infrastructure to transport that to population centers. So that is the reason, uh, partially, that Bitcoin is so abundant in China, because they had overbuilt that hydro capacity. There's another really interesting uh, movement here, represented by a number of American companies, to mine Bitcoin with otherwise vented or otherwise flared natural gas, which is a byproduct of oil mm -hmm. mining. And so in a number of places we see in the US and Alberta, Canada, uh, where there's a lot of oil activity and the natural gas cannot easily be captured because it's not very economical to put in pipelines to transport it. You see entrepreneurs setting up mining rigs off the grid where they mine Bitcoin, they capture the natural gas, and that is effectively neutral from a climate perspective or actually positive from a climate perspective because vented methane is a far worse greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide which is what you get when you combust it so there's some very interesting uh, externalities or emergent qualities of the fact that bitcoin is a sort of geography independent energy buyer so on the one hand let's say there's a mix some of it is renewable some of it is perhaps energy that would have gone wasted others some of it is sort of classic uh, hydrocarbons you know, in your vision and in the vision of many Bitcoiners, Bitcoin is just getting started. It's not, you know, it's a fraction of the size of the gold, let alone the size of the U.S. dollar. Does Bitcoin's total energy consumption source regardless? It doesn't scale, right? It just, will it continue to grow linearly, essentially, along with price? 
This is, yeah, so it's a, it's a great question, Joe. This is a, a point that a lot of the critics and actually the academic papers on the topic get wrong. So they assume a standard energy footprint on a per transaction basis, and then they s extrapolate this. And that's probably not the way you should be running that analysis. The reason miners spend so much energy and so much effort on mining Bitcoin is because for the most part, most of their revenue comes from the new issuance of Bitcoins. So right now, about 85% of their revenue comes from new Bitcoins being issued to them. But the interesting thing is that we're 88% done with that process. So in the future, most of the revenue from miners will be uh, will accrue from fees from users hmm. paying to use the Bitcoin network. And those fees, it depends how you model it out, but I would actually expect that the fee intensity would cause a lower structurally minor revenue in the distant future as the subsidy trails off. So the subsidy is not going to be with us forever. It gets cut in half every four years, as we discussed on my prior appearance on this show, uh, to great controversy. So it's a very interesting change in dynamic where you really do have to consider the fact that Bitcoin is going to be fee-based in the future, and you can use that to model out the minor revenue from there.